Hi guys. We're gonna walk through our square arrangement. Today we are using square vase. There are some that are red and there are some that are clear depending on how festive you wanna be for the Valentine's Day holiday. But I've drawn side view and then this is gonna be our top view because we are doing something special this time called a tape grid. So we'll go over that and show it to you in person. Our flowers today, we're gonna to be using mostly roses. That's gonna be our main flower we'll work with the most. Our filler is baby's breast. Our greenery is leather leaf fern. Once we've completed the arrangement, like basic level, we are gonna go in with some bear grass for a textural accent today. That's gonna to be a little bit fun. This comes after you've done all the arranging. So we're gonna show you that last. Our focus skills today, we are still working on balance. This is a square arrangement, but it is meant to be something that goes on a table and can be viewed from all sides. So I do want you to rotate as you're creating it, even sit down at a table at a seated position and make sure that you're seeing the same thing from all sides. So we're working on balance. We are also working on that shape today. So while it is square, we're gonna eventually see round edges all the way around and we are gonna have some height. So we wanna see that shape that it is balanced overall. And then our texture accent is working with the bear grass today. That's our kind of something new. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're gonna want to do today is fill up your vase with water. You're gonna do that before adding the tape grid because we need the top of the vase to be dry. So fill it up with water almost all the way to the top. And then we are doing a tape grid today. We are gonna do a two by two, basically creating a tick toe board. Normally we would use waterproof floral tape in the classroom, but that stuff's really expensive and it comes in these giant rolls and it's too much to send home. So what I want you guys to do is dig out some scotch tape and you're gonna use it the same way, but scotch tape is just not as sticky as the floral tape. So we really need to make sure that before we attach it, we take a towel and really dry off these edges. The scotch tape will hold once it's in place, but it will not stick if the edges of the vase are wet in any way. So really dry it off. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut some pieces of tape so that they slightly overlay. Like we want them to come down a little bit over the edge, but we don't want them all the way down because we will see it. And you're gonna do a tic-tac-toe board. You're gonna evenly space two pieces that way and two pieces this way. Water first, dry off the edges of the vase, tape grid second, and then we can start adding flowers. We're placing the tape on here to help us aid in um, keeping the flowers upright and also uh, providing some structure for that shape. Tape is a good alternative to floral foam, cheaper and more eco-friendly, so I like to give you an arrangement using it to get used to it. Um, and I find that it's something that sometimes people favor over floral foam once they're used to it. So this is what we're gonna be inserting our flowers into. We're never gonna go through the tape itself, but we're gonna work in these little grids to help us. Once you have that set and everything is really sticking to the vase, we should be good to go to move on to our flowers today. You should have five roses. Be careful, there could be thorns. So um, if you wanna remove those by cutting them off using your knife to scrape, that's fine. Your baby's breath, you're gonna have two stems. And your fern, you're gonna have two to three, depending on the, how big the piece was and the quality I gave you. Bear grass, we're gonna get to last. So the first thing we're gonna start with is actually our greenery today. We're gonna kinda create a bed or a pillow for our flowers to lay on top of. So I want you to take your pieces of fern and you may wanna break them apart if you've got a really long piece and those bottom leaflets are big enough to really be their own thing. You're gonna chunk them apart. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put greenery in the um, outer four corners. By doing that, they should cover these middle ones that we're missing. From the side view, we should see greenery coming out and it really covering like a fan almost into all these places so that it hits everything. Think of it like a collar. We've done collaring before. This is the same concept. We're just not focusing it on the interior center. So that is our fern. 
Once we've laid our bed down, we're gonna use our roses next. And then we'll fill in the spaces with baby's breath. We have five roses, so what we're going to do is place one in the center. I would like that to be your tallest, nicest, biggest rose. From the side view, that is going to create our peak. Everything else is gonna go down from it. Our other four, we're gonna put in the empty grids all around. So at this point, every grid should have at least a stem inside it. From the side view, you should see them filling up the space. If you got a bundle with multiple colors, try to space them out so they're not in groups, that they're more confetti and blended. The last step is the baby's breath. It's our filler. You're gonna get two stems. Make sure you break again into pieces and use them as you see fit. What we want to do is really space things out and fill in empty spaces. We don't really want any of the roses touching together without something in between them, whether that be a fern or a piece of baby's breath. They're really big, really fat, really mass flowers, and we're trying to space them out. So add baby's breath to space them out and fill in any empty spaces you see. At this point, your arrangement should be pretty full. From this, we should have a peak and everything else rounding down and around it, but from all sides, I'm seeing that same thing. And it could be airy, but it is full. There are no weird empty gaps, stuff moving around. We want that to be the case before we go to bear grass. We want the arrangement to be done. We could walk away. The bear grass is something extra. So mess with it as you see fit. This tallest point really should be no more than one extra base. We're not going super tall with this arrangement. So don't create that empty space by going too far. Our bare grass today is meant as a textural accent. So what we're gonna do is not insert it into the vase and play with it there. We're gonna hold it in our hands and create something and then insert that into the arrangement. This is an accent. Think of it like a filler flower. It's meant to show some interest but not take over the star of the show which are our roses. So with bare grass, you can do a couple things. I'm giving you lots of pieces. So do as you see fit. You might use them all, you might not. But I want everybody to at least create one textural accent. We saw in the slides, and I'm sure you could Google image search too, there's lots of options. You can take several pieces and put them together and create an arch. You could create two arches and put them together to create the heart shape if you're really into Valentine's Day. You can also put them next to each other and braid them like hair or a friendship bracelet, lots of different braid patterns and create that. Create something and insert it into the vase arrangement to be an accent, a thing that just pops and says like, wow, like an extra exciting visual.
Here you're gonna see some more options for working with bare grass. Ignore the arrangement that was for a different class. If you've got some rubber bands or hair elastics, they can be helpful in holding your bare grass in place while you work with the shape to manipulate.